Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. For the community, by the community. Welcome to Mr. Pop's Neighborhood, where everything is all good in our hood. I'd like to introduce you all to one of the fabulous advocacy in the greater Hartford area. Her name is Regina Dighton, a.k.a. Chi, because she eliminates beef and takes no grief. She is the director of the CAC, which is the Children Advocacy Center. It is a pleasure to have you on my show. Thank you so much for having me. It's Pop, who of course named me Chi. I'm the director at the Greater Hartford Children's Advocacy Center at St. Francis Hospital. And especially tonight, I'm here representing our community outreach program, Under Our Wings. And Pop, you know what our topic is, what our subject is. It's to eliminate what? Child abuse, child sexual abuse. It is preventable. Absolutely preventable. And so tonight, we will be taking a look with the help of our volunteers on, and we'll be taking a look with our volunteers at how to prevent child sexual abuse. And our big point for tonight is going to be to become aware and to learn. We'll also be doing some following shows that you'll hear no more about later on this channel. Say here in this magazine that man got 25 years for raping his stepdaughter. Ooh. Them people too crazy. So nursy. I'm glad I don't live up there in mansion town. All that money done gone to their heads. Mm -hmm. <gasps> they don't believe in God. They just do any kind of abominable thing that come to their head. Nursy. Little girls doing it with they daddies? No. Betty wouldn't give them no more money. That's why they told on them. Mm. It's the rich folks be doing all that crazy stuff. And they have the nerve to look down on us. I never heard of nothing like that in my day. Hmm. Well, I did. One of my friends, Ada. You remember that little girl bee that I used to play with? Oh, yeah. Sweet little thing. Till she growed up too fast. <laughs> Ain't she the one got in a family way before she finished mm -hmm. high school? Whatever happened to her, and what happened to her child? Ada, they moved. Mm -hmm. Then I heard she ran away. But she used to, to, she used to tell me something that I didn't believe. I did not believe. I thought she was making it up. You know, making up stuff that I, I didn't think could really happen. <laughs> Probably was lying. Yeah, yeah. Don't know what got into her when she started to develop. But girls like that, that have that kind of attitude, they tell lies. Mm -hmm. I hope you didn't pay her no mind. I didn't, but I wish I did. She was she was really suffering. She needed a friend. <laughs> well, yeah, I heard. She had plenty of friends. <laughs> Boyfriends. <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> when she should have been doing her studies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> May wasn't nobody. 
Nobody could have done nothing for that gal. <laughs> she made her own bed and she had to lie mm, in it. Do say, do say. Mm. Now, I, I, I want you to listen to me, Ada. This has been bothering me for a while now. She didn't get like that by herself, right? <clears throat> she used to tell me that her Uncle Pete used to come in her room at night mm. and feel on her under the covers. Didn't she say she see him shaking himself and making funny noises, you know? At the end of the bed, she said he scared her. And then in the morning, he was the one who would tell her mother that she don't need to take her to school. He gonna, he gonna take her to school, do a favor and make sure that she get there on time. So her mother leave early for work and Uncle Pete be in the house alone with B. Mm -hmm. After breakfast, he call her in the bathroom and tell her to sit on the toilet to pee. Oh my before she goodness. Go to she said, <sighs> He just look at her pee, and she felt scared. Mm. That didn't make no sense, I said. I know your uncle crazy, but you need to stop lying on that man. Mm. Don't nobody do nothing that stupid. <laughs> Lord, I was trying to mind my business, so it's impossible with you two. I was checking my messages, but y'all was so loud, and Ada, with all due respect, <laughs> You as wrong as you are loud. Just to say what, child? All due respect. All respect is due to me because I'm your elder. Mm, go ahead, oh, Ida. Because I respect you, I got to correct you. Carry on, teacher. Well, you know, I've been taking some le classes at the community center. Mm -hmm. They had uh, some of the talk about preventing child sexual abuse. And you know what B was saying? Mm -hmm. Sounds a lot like what I learned. For instance, most sexual abuse is committed by somebody the child knows and trusts, okay? Oh and they start by being real nice, so nobody would ever think they do something like that. Mm -hmm. They even tell the kids, don't nobody gonna believe you because everybody like me. Then, and then they go after the child, but they don't just jump on them and rape them, like the stuff we see on TV. Those are rare cases. Uh-uh, they start slow making friends with a child. Mm. But before they make friends with a child, they make sure they get the parents to trust them. Wow. Okay? Mm. See? Uh, Uncle Pete mm -hmm. got mama to leave the child alone right there, right? Mm -hmm. And then what happened was every time B wanted something expensive, her mother said no, Uncle Pete would show up with it. And the mother got mad saying, you know, you're undermining my authority. Mm -hmm. But huh. then that made B like Uncle Pete more than her mother. She said he was a favorite relative and understood her better, mm. okay? Because mm. I know B, too. Remember, I knew B. Uh -huh. They said she uh, liked him better, okay? Mm. Then she said he started coming in the bathroom when she was getting out the shower. Wow. And he would pretend it was an accident. And, and she oh, said she yeah. thought, good Lord, nobody can forget to knock that many times. Please. Right? And didn't mm. he see and he feel the steam? coming out the bottom, yeah. but she said she wasn't really scared to the bone until she woke up one night in her room, it's dark. He's sitting on the bed, mm. right? Got one hand on B in her pajama bottom and the other hand on his nasty old thing. And she pretended she was asleep. He knew she wasn't asleep because she said when he left, he said, girl, you remember about that money I gave you, don't you? Oh, Jesus. It's true that you're never too old to learn. Mm -hmm. You know, May, we ought to take that class, too. Yeah. We could probably help a lot of people. Mm -hmm. They have class on the first Tuesday every month. It's a group called Under Our Wings. Hmm. That's a nice name. But, but who is Under Our Wings? It's a group of people just like all of us. Mm -hmm. And they meet on the first Tuesday every month yeah. at the Children's Advocacy Center at St. Francis Hospital. 
They'll send you directions. They will email you directions in a minute, talk to you on the phone. Okay. They're real nice. I and they come email. together to, um, you know, all get together and teach people this stuff so children don't have to suffer like this. Mm -hmm. You know, and the parents too, because it hurts the parents, you know. Yes, yes. Mm. Well, it wasn't no one to help when I was growing up. Mm -hmm. You just had to pretend that it never happened. Mm. If you said something, they would blame you and say you was too fast and call you all kinds of bad names. Mm -hmm. Well, thank God there is help today, and we can be part of that. That's mm. right. Good <laughs> hope. A gift from God. When I look into your eyes, I see a gift from God who at the age of six will tug at your mother's skirt asking questions such as why, when, and what are you doing? When I look into your eyes, I see you at the age of 12 walking with your daddy, wanting to know about cars, going fishing, and talking about girls. Your eyes tell a story that will, t will look into the future and give you insight to the wonders of the next generation. When I look into your eyes, I see you at, 15, at 18, ready to leave the loving arms of daddy and mother and seek higher learning that will help you reach your life goal and fulfill your dreams. Your eyes tell a story, and at 24, you will be ready to share all that you have learned on this journey to your little boy. Let me live and see tomorrow. Tomorrow is what we all look forward to seeing. Procrastinating is a good example of how tomorrow is used. I'll do it tomorrow. I'll wait until tomorrow to do this job. We tell our children, if you don't be good, you will not go to the movies tomorrow. This is what I want to talk about children, our children, our tomorrow, and their future. Drugs are such a strong factor on today's environment and family structure. Many homes are not homes, and the mothers and fathers are go going on their way using drugs and destroying themselves as well as the children. The situation that we have here is a drug and alcoholic home. The question is, will I live to see tomorrow? There has to be a positive side of life for that child to see a positive tomorrow. Tomorrow denotes a better day, and if everything around a child is negative and dark, there will, be a, there will, there will not be a bright, clear, and positive tomorrow. The tomorrow that I speak about is not only the next day in one's life. I am speaking of all the tomorrows from early childhood to adulthood. The time has come for society to pay close attention to what is going on around them. We are losing our youth to drugs and every day. And even the physical man and even if the physical man lives to see tomorrow, how productive will he be? We have to start working with the inner man, feeding the, and creating a positive attitude and surrounding. The, the community must pay, play a part in helping to keep the, our community clear of drugs and drug pushers. You, you deserve to be loved, women, you are precious in the sight of God. You're just like flowers that bloom in the spring. Everybody knows that flowers are such beautiful things. You have to know your worth. You deserve to be loved. Don't let no one talk down to you. Not for a moment. Don't let no one slap you down. They have no right to. 
Don't let no one make you feel that you're less than a woman. Hold your head up high. Oh, don't look down. Girls, you're beautiful. There's no need to frown. No matter your color, no matter your size, no matter your age or the color of your eyes, you're beautiful. And you deserve to be loved. Hold your heads up high. Oh, never look down. Girls, you're beautiful. There's no need to frown. No matter your color, no matter your size, no matter your age or the color of your eyes, you're beautiful. And you deserve to be loved. Every woman, you deserve to be loved. Mothers, tell your daughters you deserve to be loved. Wow. Sing a song. Sing a song for the youth. Sing a song for the young men that have lost their life, precious blood, in the street. Sing a song. Sing a song. Precious is the blood that Jesus shed. Precious is the blood of Jesus that gave man life. Sing a song as you watch the blood of our youth waste away in the street as it is washed into the drains. Sing a song. Mothers, hold your sons close to your breast and sing a song. Sing them a song of love. Sing a song to, to them before they are lost to the street. Fathers, listen to the shouts in the night and take your sons and talk, and talk to them about what it is to be, be a strong young man. Educate them with a loving fatherly touch and be an example for them. Be that man that you want them to become. Don't let the streets take them. Sing a song, Jesus loved me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Look around before, it's too, before it is too late. Everywhere on every street corner, there are youth and guns. Bring them off the street before it is too late. We are responsible for the youth. Sing a song, sing a song. There's power in the precious blood of Jesus. My friend, my friend and I, we run and play in the sand. We play catch in the grass. We share secrets that only the two of us understand. I see that he is different from me by his hair, his eyes, and his color. I don't care a mine because he is my buddy. He is my friend. Children, God bless our children, bright and beautiful like the sun. God, please bless them, each and every one. Tell them that 
they're special. Show interest in what they do. Don't be stingy with your hugs. Give them lots of kisses too. So when they're all grown up, you can have peace of mind. Because you taught your child the word of God. You were loving and kind. And when they remember the time when they were a child, they will remember the ones who raised them with a great big smile. Yes, when they're older, and they begin to reminisce about how you told them that they were special and then you sealed it with a kiss. They will try with all their might when they decide to have their own kids to show that same love and just like you did. Children. God bless our children. Bright and beautiful like the sun. God, please bless them. Each and every one. We'll awaken one day, new and religious, whole and singing. Until now, dark woman, an insignificant reddish-brown spot on a sheet. Douched in cold water, bleached, and washed away. Until now, watching a nondescript man on top of your grandma's quilt, whispering, there's no more room on top. There's no more room on top. There's no more room on top. Yes, the sad thing, the worst thing, is being left without regard, without worth of self. The sweetness of freedom is somewhere. Lying in a self-made bed, I will break free from your wretched arms and take my chances in the storm. Guided by the moody winds, I listen to a voice within. Angels serenade me with a song of peace. Holy, holy, I am released. Again, Chief, in closing, I'd like to really, really thank you for coming on this show, Mr. Pops Neighborhood, along with your colleagues by making people aware of what's going on. Because in my philosophy, intervention is our intentions. And we need to make people not scared, but aware. And I pray that you will continue doing what you're doing in your endeavors, you and your colleagues, and I'm sure God will get the glory. Thank you so much. I love doing this. I absolutely love it. And people often ask, how do you do that work? That subject of child abuse, child sexual abuse is just so ugly and distasteful. I have a few responses. And one, I get to see kids get better. I get to see parents and all caring adults get wiser and more hopeful. I get the greatest pleasure and even fun in educating, because when we educate, we at Under Our Wings make sure we motivate. I hope some of you will come and join us on the first Tuesday of every month 
at the Children's Advocacy Center when we meet at, under our wings and be one of the people that volunteers to go out to health fairs, any kind of civic event, town fairs where there are tables where you can pass information to people, as well as calling a group together in your home, in your backyard, at your church, at your synagogue, at your temple, wherever, and spread this message of hope. This is a message of, for those of us who are survivors, knowing that we can not only survive, but that we can thrive and live wonderful lives full of love and hope and just spreading good, and that we can help other people, especially children, to not have to go through this, but if they do, to begin their healing process early. As we saw in the skit, one of the, uh, Ida told us that in her day, nobody listened and there was no help. The great message is not only that there is help, but that we are the help. If there's to be help, it's us. People talking to their colleagues, to their friends, to their families, to their communities, communicating in ways that people can hear and bring in with this whatever it takes to make people want to come. So it doesn't have to be ugly. It starts out ugly and terrible, and it's a heinous thing. But our point is to turn lives back to happiness, you, or maybe for the first time, happiness and hope. Well, I want to be the first to tell you personally that I really admire you, not just a person that talks about it, you be about it. And we have to really, really be concerned about these young people's lives. We have to show them guidance, we have to protect them, and give them positive direction. Thanks so much, and they'll give it back to us. They will give it back to us in just seeing them do well. And you're welcome to be on Mr. Pop's neighborhood at any time. Oh, we will be back. Thanks so much. We will be back. All right. You deserve to be loved. Don't let me.